Good evening everyone, time for another silver update. This is the two hour chart of silver provided by netdania.com. You can click on the link below. Now there's a couple of things I want to point out on this chart. Uh, the first is going to be this primary trend line and uh, you can see that the number of touch points are very very large. Uh, they're not perfect but we're talking about one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, some, something like thirteen touch points on this. So this is a very, very well established trend. Now, a lot of people criticize me and say, why do you look at charts? Well, I look at charts because charts tell you what has happened. Now, the chances of this pattern, of this trend channel, being met and then failed uh, consistently for that many number of times over a period you can see it begins all the way back in uh, that's uh, April 25th or so all the way up to the present the odds by random chance of that occurring are infinitesimal uh, so that means something that means that there are a lot of traders albeit paper traders but there are a lot of traders who are watching this trend line and uh, probably a lot of people who are manipulators who are watching this trend line as well at some point this trend line is going to be violated now we know that that's the case because I did a measurement here this first blue arrow is just uh, at May 1st and the next one is June 1st just to get a idea of the how fast this is declining so if we do that measurement uh, we get roughly a dollar fifty we're talking 2307 to about 2457 we're talking a dollar fifty a month decline now if you take a dollar fifty a month decline over 12 months uh, that gives you from the current price a price of a dollar an ounce of silver so can this trend continue for a year? Yes, it can. Can silver go to a dollar? I guess it can. Uh, will you be able to get any silver for a dollar? I highly doubt that. So that's very significant. It means something. Even though it's just paper, it still means something. They're still very, very involved in regulating the price of silver. So before I want to talk about some of the economic topics, I just wanted to jump over to the member forum. Now, uh, give you some updates real quick. We have added a chat section that's over on the right. So if you want to chat, you can just go down here, click in the box, and uh, send. And uh, it uh, shows the number of people logged in up here at the top. Now, the default avatar is the gravatar symbol and uh, I, I set it to that there are very few you can see near near Kabi has one I have one you have to set that at gravatar so if you don't have a gravatar account what you need to do is you need to go over to gravatar and uh, set that up and then that will be it has to be with the email address that you registered with then what this will do is it will pull that avatar. We're working on a manual avatar process, but it's very difficult. So uh, if you really want an avatar, go over to Gravatar. And uh, so a lot of people have supported us. We've added forums, and uh, I just really want to thank all the new members. I really appreciate your support. I also want to thank uh, Kevin, our tireless tech uh, techno guru who's helped us we simply couldn't have done it without him and uh, I'm very pleased with the launch of the member site hopefully it's going to be a community for people who are interested in getting together and talking about stacking physical silver now let's get over to the topic of the night I'm gonna start off with Eric King this just came out and I'm not gonna go through and read this I don't want to do any copyright violations but I would just want to show you some charts here that are on this this is from Eric Pomboy of Merit Meridian Macro Research and just take a look at some of these charts to get an idea 
of where we're at now of course the first one is the gold net commercial I don't follow that too much I really wanted to show you the economic charts that's real estate inventory uh, this is a very important chart this chart shows you uh, the really terrible trend we have in employment you can see that we never really recovered and that is even more uh, backed up uh, by the velocity of the M2 money supply which is absolutely frightening you can see we're absolutely in new lows uh, off the chart lows on M2 the Baltic dry index you can see it's absolutely dead uh, it ticked above a thousand but pretty much this level that we reached after the crash of 2008 we had a brief rally but we pretty much gone back to no activity and so those are very very ominous charts that tells you that the Federal Reserve's strategy of lowering interest rates to zero and then when that doesn't work actually printing money out of thin air it's not working but of course we're going to expect to see more of the same now he points out in that article that uh, the tapering is clearly not going to happen now I wanted to take you over to the Treasury direct site uh, you can go to that site and get the national debt and uh, what you do is you can specify a beginning date and an ending date I went ahead and did January 1st 2000 up to the present I did the last day in July and the anomalous series that everyone is talking about here is the length of time that the national debt has capped at this 16738 level you can see there's the 31st of this year and we can begin to scroll back and we have to go all the way back to May 31st that's the first date we got that 16738 then before that we're around 16737 and quite strangely we actually have higher numbers here the highest one we can see here is going to be this 16828 that we turned in on April 30th and there's some 800s here 16 uh, 700 so until we get back to about February that's about the time when we hit this high level and have pretty much stayed there so the question is why why are these numbers pegged here and they refuse to go any higher we've been told by the government that t the tax revenues in the quarter of uh, April 15th when the tax revenues came in they were surprisingly better and they said that the deficit was reduced if the deficit was reduced you would expect to see this figure at least fall somewhere along the line here and it's not this series of numbers and dates appears to be like a chart that is tapping up against the ceiling waiting to break out but for some reason is unable to break out we know why it can't break out because they have to raise the debt ceiling so they are doing all kinds of financial chicanery my guess is they're probably looting the uh, federal pensions my guess is when this is finally lifted and I think that'll probably be in the fall with a debt ceiling vote then uh, it's going to rocket higher now this is not an unprecedented situation we can actually go back to a similar time frame uh, back to let's go back to the same period in 2012 you can see that it hung around 15.8 not for very long so certainly not in 2012 there was a year in this series though in the same time frame that I saw something similar to what we're looking at right now so let's check 2011 and you can see that here in 2011 we got this 14 345 starting 
in May and that held until about right here the 28th of July actually the, the 1st of August and then here we go ratcheting higher we had a two billion dollar jump and uh, it started to rise from there so this has something to do with the fiscal year but clearly uh, and you can all uh, link this so you can pull the series for yourself you can pull the numbers all the way back to 1993 and you can see uh, frightening fact that back in 2000 the national debt was 5.7 trillion dollars and we're currently at 16.7 trillion dollars so a threefold move in about 13 years now do you know of anybody's wages who've gone up threefold in the last 13 years for doing the same thing I don't think so we could probably name a lot of prices that have gone up threefold including gas oil and a lot of other things but uh, we probably can't find anyone's wages who've gone up threefold unless they're Wall Street banksters so we've got uh, definitely the government cooking the books I'm expecting that when this number is allowed to rise it's going to rise very very rapidly it's going to go through 17 and probably through 18 uh, sometime in the fall and uh, the national debt will just continue to ratchet higher back to the silver chart this is a very very important pattern the last time I pointed out a uh, breakout target was twenty dollars and fifty cents we had uh, a Bernanke smackdown and then we had these bad number releases and then another smackdown you have to remember the way that the silver and gold markets are currently behaving is counterintuitive that's very common with markets because they're betting on the chance of central bank intervention so for the paper gold and paper silver good news is bad news and bad news is good news the reason why the good news is bad news is because if we get good news on the economy and we know most of that's fake I already showed you on the Eric King article but if we get the fake good news then that's more likely that we'll get some tapering sooner less likely we'll get more quantitative easing and therefore that becomes bad news for the metals uh, the paper metals again now on the other hand when we get very very bad news that means that there is a much less likely chance of some kind of tapering coming along and a much higher chance of more quantitative easing either continued for a longer time or actually increased so that's the way the markets are trading right now all of that really doesn't matter if you're stacking silver I did cover on the blog the latest uh, numismatic deal and a lot of charts a lot of articles so if you want to get in on that go ahead and sign up from the membership site but we're keeping an eye on the silver price we're looking for that twenty dollar and fifty cent price target that may signal a change in trend of this uh, long-lasting trend and then we're gonna watch and see what the price does from there and we'll talk to you next time